Welcome, dear listener, to Haunted Tales, your weekly horror anthology, with stories full of ghosts and ghouls, crimes and curses, demons and devils and more. One foot in front of the next, one step after the other, day in, day out. Bernard shook his head, pulled his jacket even tighter around his body, as gravel crunched beneath the soles of his shoes, and a chilly wind blew across his face. This was his punishment, but did it fit the crime at all any more? He could feel blisters on his heels and numbness in his toes. How many days had passed already? Six? Seven? He could hardly remember. Steps and seconds flowed into each other. Hours turned into days. The only thing that changed were his surroundings. Sometimes he'd be walking through small villages, other times along highways. Hardly any car would stop for him, and if they did, he always felt the strange kind of anxiety. Not just because some of them seemed to have bad intentions, but because of what would happen if they followed through with them. This here, the walk, was his punishment, and apparently no one was allowed to interfere. The first time it had happened, Bernard had stopped just a few seconds had tried to reason with the guy and his gun, but to no avail. Getting ever more irate, the man had started screaming at him. The skin of his face had turned bright red as spittle flew out from between his lips. That had been when Bernard had felt the presence again, hadn't even looked back to confirm his fears before starting to walk. One single thought had kept in his mind. If the man wanted to shoot him for walking along the road, he should. It would probably be the easy way out. He'd finally be allowed to stop walking while he bled out on the side of the road. But the screaming had suddenly changed, gotten panicked, fearful, filled with pain, just as the shape following behind Bernard had caught up to the car. This chill that had run through his body never seemed to leave him completely. It was always there, got worse whenever he slowed down and the shape started to catch up to him again. This was his punishment. All day, every day, except for four hours starting at dawn, when the shape disappeared and he was allowed to rest. The first day, he had tried running away, had made it completely exhausted, quite away, before he suddenly felt its presence again, following him, pushing him into the same direction as always. Talking to it was impossible. Screaming for help wouldn't save him either. It had already extended its hand, tried to touch him, as he had finally relented and started to run back the way he had come. The following 16 hours had been the worst of his life. Exhausted to the point of almost collapsing, he had dragged his body along the road, half asleep, dreaming of the thing only two steps behind, waiting for its chance. Since the next daybreak, he had never even tried to run again. It wouldn't grant him another chance, he had felt it. So now, Bernard walked on. Practically all day, definitely every day, toward a goal he didn't know, but hoped even existed. This past week, he had tried his darnest to keep those thoughts at bay. He had told himself again and again that it wasn't important. All that mattered were the steps he was taking right now. To keep on going, to ignore the sinking feeling in his chest that maybe his punishment would only end when his feet stopped moving. And he crashed to the ground, while the shape finally caught up to him. No, he had told himself, that would make no sense. If all it wanted was to kill him, it could have done so already. It wouldn't have given him another chance after he tried to run away, right? 
The sun was setting on the piece of the world he was walking on now, and without its rays the wind got even colder. This was one of the worst parts of his punishment. The hopelessness of knowing that he would be walking along in darkness, only illuminated by the stars above, while the thing behind him would keep step, driving him on. What had he done to deserve this? Neither his family nor his friends would know what had happened to him. He couldn't even tell them that he was alive right now, at least for the moment. But maybe it was better this way. Some of them might try to help him, and he definitely didn't want any of them coming close enough to the shape to experience what it could do with their own bodies. Should he be grateful to her that she had taken his phone and keys and thrown them into the back seat of his now abandoned car? Bernard shook his head, felt a new chill from the cold breeze and heard gravel beneath his shoes. At least in these cold hours, he couldn't feel the thirst as much, even though hunger seemed to plague him worse than before. Maybe he would find another bite to eat soon, he tried to give himself hope. Some half-eaten burger and a few-day-old fries chucked out from one of the cars driving by. Man, that would be great. He stumbled as the tip of his shoe caught on the edge of the asphalt and Bernard felt himself missing the next step. His hands, buried deep in his pockets, tried to stop his fall, but couldn't get out fast enough. He fell, closed his eyes reflexively, and prayed that the pain wouldn't be too bad. Bernard could feel his left knee hitting the hard pavement, sharp edges ripping through his jeans, cutting into his skin before his full weight landed on this one body part and sent a shot of pain up and down his leg. He groaned, hardly felt his nose scraping along the same road, as his hands finally came free and uselessly tried to cushion his fall. This was it, he thought. Pain disappeared, left a strange, numb feeling behind. The spectre following him was coming closer, and even though part of his mind screamed at him to stand up, his hands kept shaking, but remained planted firmly on the ground. Why get up? Just to get tortured further? Even if he pushed his body to stand, started to walk again, he'd be dead soon all the same. Wouldn't it be better to simply stay here, feel his own hot breath on his skin, and wait for it all to be over? This shape following him would be above him in a matter of seconds and he wouldn't even have to walk another step. It seemed like the easiest way out. He could feel the thing coming closer. All he had to do was nothing, he told himself again. Could feel the tips of his fingernails scratching across the cold asphalt. A shiver running through his whole body. He'd never see them again. Neither family nor friends. They probably would never find out what had happened to him, would still be looking for him. Somewhere behind Bernard, footsteps rang out, gravel shot across the street. His whole body was trembling. Angrily, he hissed a curse, felt his arms straining as they pushed him off the street. No, he couldn't simply give up. Feeling a shooting pain right through his left leg, he stumbled once more as he came to his feet and shot a look back to where the strange shape would be walking. It was waiting there, just a single step behind him. Its figure, like a wall of smoke, towering above him, pointing one arm in his direction. He could feel a drop of blood trickling from the tip of his nose, falling down on his lips. What was this thing doing? It didn't move, seemed to wait for him. Should he stay where he was? No. His whole body was shaking and shivering. This shade walking behind him wouldn't simply stop like that. 
He could see the smoke of its body whirling in the starlight, bellowing out from its core. As surreal as it looked, this thing was here to drive him on, to make sure he wouldn't run off. The woman he had cut off with his car meant to punish him. He could see the tip of this thing's hand pointing directly at him, getting closer slowly, inch by inch. It would kill him, he knew. Bernard whirled around, growled as he made a step, and felt immense pain shooting through his left leg. The wound in his knee stung, but the fear drove him on. Apparently, he thought, he wasn't ready to die yet. Hobbling along, he could feel the presence following him again, giving him just a few steps, then starting to walk behind him. Closer than before, he reminded himself. Through gritted teeth, he cursed, as he tried to keep the pace while hobbling along. Why? It was the question that bothered him now the most. Why did he stand up? Why had it stopped? Why was he still not ready to give up? Pain and fear blew away the tiredness he had felt a few minutes ago, as he was now again following the completely empty and deserted road. He could see his own breath coming in tiny clouds. There was sweat running down his back and cheeks. The skin on his knee was tightening with every step, and a sharp, searing pain shot through his leg every time his foot even so much as grazed the ground beneath. A constant scream of curses now escaped his mouth. He wanted to sit down, take a look at the wound and rest, but his mind wouldn't let him do it. The spectre was still following him, driving him toward a goal he couldn't fathom. What had he done to deserve this? He hadn't been that bad, had he? Bernard still remembered the trip. It had been for work and maybe a tiny bit of pleasure. But two weeks ago, when he had gotten ready for the trip, he would have never imagined ending up in such a mess. He had behaved himself, just like he had promised. A few beers here and there, cocktails in the evening with his colleagues. Maybe he had indulged a little bit too much in something else. But it hadn't gotten out of hand at all. He had always driven drunk and high, yeah, but he had never killed or hurt anyone. Bernard had prided himself on still being a safe driver after the long nights out. Some of his friends even had told him as much. But then there was this dumb tiny car, pale and slow, driving along the back roads in the middle of the night. He hadn't seen it at first. It was an accident. No matter what anyone said, it hadn't been his fault this tiny piece of shit couldn't stay on the road and ended up in the ditch. And now he was getting punished, not for the accident, but for stopping and stepping out of his car. The woman with these strange eyes would have never found him if he had just continued down the road. Remembering her seemed to increase the pain from his knee shooting through his leg. The first moment their eyes had met, he had felt it. He shouldn't have stopped. This woman was completely off her meds. She hadn't screamed at him or shown any kind of discomfort as she had stepped out of her car. And hadn't even raised her voice at all as she grabbed him and pulled him in tightly. Her red hair had shimmered in the light. The strangely old eyes had fixed himself on his own. Bernard couldn't remember the words she had spoken clearly. Shocked and more than a bit drunk, he had to admit. But the message was still seared into his mind. Woke him up after four hours each morning, day by day. Walk. Never stop. Rest at dawn. Face your punishment. With that, she had taken the keys out of his hand and the phone out of his pocket before pushing him back on the street. And his feet had started walking. First on their own, with no chance for him to stop. He could still look back, saw her throwing his belongings into his car before climbing down to the pale white piece of shit that was hanging in the ditch. 
It had taken him a few minutes before he had realized that the force pushing him along had already disappeared. But as he had stopped, he had felt this malevolent presence in his back. The shade, specter, phantom, or whatever one could call it, was now following him. There had been no doubt in his mind that this thing would kill him if it caught up to him. He had tried to run at first, but it had kept up. Every time he had looked back, it had been there. When he had slowed down, so did the shade. From time to time, he had tried to talk to it, but there was never an answer. He had tried to run, but it always followed him. So it had been hours, days later. And now, he had to admit, he was nearing his end. The shade was still there, walking behind him, while the muscles around his knees cramped up. His right, less damaged leg started to hurt too. Hobbling along the road was much too difficult in his current state. Soon, he wouldn't be able to move anymore, no matter how loud his instincts screamed at him to get up again. That was the same thought that had haunted him these past few nights. But this time, it seemed far more likely to come true before the sun would rise again. Bernard grimaced as he grabbed his knee, felt a sharp pain as he pulled his leg up and hopped along three paces. The calf of his right leg started to cramp, and he immediately let go of his left. He cursed. This wouldn't work. The more he tried to protect one leg, the worse the other got. He could feel a chill in his back. The shade was coming closer again. Would it stop once more? Maybe it would really kill him. Just scare him to keep him going? He'd find out sooner or later. A malignant thought appeared in his mind. There was no way this thing would let him live. He remembered the screams of the man with the gun again. Those weren't noises one could make if one's life wasn't in the process of being snuffed out. Bernard felt his steps getting quicker at the thought, had to force himself to slow down again, otherwise he could collapse at any moment. The cramp was still getting worse, the pain in his knee didn't subside. Even though his pants were ripped there, he felt nothing of the cold air he had hoped might alleviate the discomfort at least a little. Bernard stumbled on while the stars above him looked down with cruel indifference. He just had to stay alive until dawn. The four hours he'd get would make a world of difference, he tried to tell himself, but only managed to smile half-heartedly. It wouldn't matter, another voice in his head kept telling him. There was no way it would heal in just four hours. The only thing that would change would be that it would grow even stiffer, swell and stop moving at all. He might not even manage to get up again. As cruel as this voice was, it had a point, Bernard had to admit. There was probably some damage to a ligament. Soon his knee would start to swell, and without rest and medicine, it would take a long, long time to get better. Much longer than he had. Bernard stumbled again, felt the pain shoot through his upper thigh, into his hip as the damaged knee stopped his fall. He growled, screamed, hopped on his other leg and suddenly felt the presence of the shade directly behind him. It was close, much closer than it should be. Had he slowed down that much? Was it getting faster? Cold breath touched his neck. Instinctively, he turned his head, could see nothing behind him but the smoke-like substance of the shade. Its body blocked everything else, and it really was as close as he had ever seen it. Merely a few inches away from his back. Bernard squealed as he jumped and felt the pain again, tried to land on his less injured leg before hobbling along hastily. The feeling of this thing's presence didn't leave him. He couldn't hear it, 
but felt they're just as bad as before. Yeah, it was speeding up, coming closer even. Another curse escaped from between his gritted teeth. As he jumped again, ignored the pain as best he could, while praying that his foot wouldn't get caught anywhere. The shade now started to raise its arm. It would touch him. He had to get away. Bernard cried out silently as he tried to run, unable to pull his eyes from the imposing figure following him now closely. His own arrhythmic footsteps echoed in his ears, the noise mixing itself with the hollow rushing sound of the blood in his head and the racing of his heartbeat. It would catch him, his mind continued to screech. He could feel the pain now shooting through his whole body, his left leg a single glowing, searing part. The sun had set me a minute ago. He'd have to run through the night. An impossible task at the best of times, and now completely unthinkable. Bernard could feel his teeth unclenching as a wailing cry escaped him. The arm was outstretched now, a single finger pointing directly at his back. His own scream filled his ears. He could see the finger coming closer, touching his jacket, and Bernard jumped from fright. The instant his foot left the asphalt, he already knew he wouldn't stick to landing. There was no way of stopping himself now. His body had reacted on its own, desperate to keep him alive just a second longer, but had now sealed his fate. With his tearful shout still ringing in his ears, he felt the tip of his shoe scraping across the asphalt, his upper body tilting forward, while the finger of the shade plunged into his jacket. He lost his balance completely, still couldn't take his eyes off the thing following him as he felt his elbow hitting the road, then himself sliding along it. Pain was everywhere. His whole body seemed to burn as the rough asphalt scraped away his skin. The thing following him didn't slow down either. It was above him before his body had stopped moving, unseen eyes staring down at him while his hands tried desperately to crawl away from danger. A cackling noise filled the air as Bernard pulled his legs toward him, held out a scratched and bleeding hand to stop the shade from touching him. Its finger was coming closer, pointed directly at his heart, and he realized that that was what death would look like for him. The cackling got louder as the shade's hand passed through his own. He could feel his pulse racing even more his whole chest shivering with every beat. The finger touched him, entered through his jacket, and Bernard screamed one last time before it would finally reach his racing heart. Footsteps were coming closer. He could see the thing bending down, its head facing him. Begging wouldn't help, he remembered the woman's voice. You only rest at dawn. Bernard looked away from the shadowy hand now inside his chest, up toward its face. He could see something moving there in the whirling smoke. For an instant, it looked like a mouth, lips grinning, as the thing above him suddenly paused, then vanished in a puff of smoke shooting out toward the sky. The footsteps stopped next to his head, and while his eyes still followed the movement of the dark, bellowing remnants, red hair and pale skin appeared above him. Strange eyes were staring down at him in the night. He could feel her, knew that she was grinning now too. The next time you cut me off, drunk and high behind the wheel, it won't be a joke, understood? She murmured as a cold hand touched his cheek. Bernard couldn't follow the words. He was alive. This was the woman that had sick the shade on him. Now, get out of here. I've got better things to do than play around with you. He could feel her patting his cheek before she suddenly turned away and walked off. 
Bernard's heart was still racing, his body trembling as he sank down fully, and his head turned to look along the road. He could see her car parked there a few yards away. The figure, veiled by shadows, was walking toward it. There was no sign of the shade anymore. He could feel his chest hurting, a stinging pain in his lungs. The car's engine started up before he even managed to move another finger. He was still lying on the same spot as the vehicle passed him by, its interior brightly lit, with a hand waving at him sarcastically. You're alive, he told himself, could hardly believe his words. Bernard could feel a tear streaming down his face, cold shivers running through his body as he screamed into the night. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this week's story. If there are any questions, concerns, or cute pet pictures you would like to share with us, there are links to our X, Instagram, Tumblr, and our Buy Me A Coffee in the episode descriptions. All the best to you, and please join us again next week for another haunted tale.